Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from the triune God. Amen. Amen. Last weekend, I attended the funeral of my, with my good friend Mimi. The funeral took place in a non-denominational community country church, and since the church wasn't part of a specific Christian tradition either of us had really been a part of, we didn't know what to expect. Uh, so, since we didn't know what to expect, we speculated on the way there together about what we might see and experience. Mimi, um, knowing that I have performed quite a few funerals myself, asked me what kind of a funeral I wanted, and I asked them the same thing, and both of us both agreed we wanted a funeral, a big one, for people to be sad and to share stories. Mimi even joked about paying a professional mourner to come out and really make a big show of things. And after we had a good chuckle about it, I shared with Mimi that in my experience, there seemed to be less and less of sharing those emotions of loss and grief with one another publicly. A lot of families I have worked with have asked for a celebration of life service and asked for no sadness, just good times. We just want happy memories and that's what we want, which is something I always try and guide people away from because grieving and being sad are honestly some of the most important parts of the human spectrum of emotions. They are part of what makes us who we are, even when we try to opt out of them in the funeral. Those emotions bubble up. People are just sad. People grieve sometimes, though we try our very best not to show it. People are people as it turns out, and despite our very best efforts not to, our humanity, the way we are, just leaks out. In a world constantly trying to avoid that pain, that grief, that weakness, church remains one of those few holy, vulnerable, and sacred places where we really are given the sacred permission to just experience our humanity and have that be okay. Our gospel text today is the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount, which is almost always the gospel text for All Saints Sunday. I love the Beatitudes because it's so otherworldly. They are strange. They are familiar to us because they are a common text for us to read. But they are so countercultural to what we would expect in our world. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger. The people who need justice are desperate to see God's faith, but desperate are the persecuted. That's not how our world works. In the way we are used to seeing the world, the first finish first. The strong get stronger, the rich get richer. It is not the meek, it is not the last who benefit. How can this be? It's strange, it's different than how we see the world, but it is true. And if being alive is a blessing and to experience all this stuff in the Beatitudes is to be alive, is to experience the human experience, then transitive property, to experience this grief, suffering, restlessness, it can also be a blessing. Even though it feels backwards, those thin places of sadness, of raw emotion, they can also be very full of God's presence. This weekend, as I thought about all the saints and All Saints Sunday, I started thinking about other funerals that were mine to participate in. Not ones that I presided over, but ones where I was the mess in the pew, where I was experiencing the holy and hard parts of being human, and where someone else needed to hold me and my family, or where we held each other. I thought about my grandma Jenny, I thought about my grandpa Bob, I thought about their laughs and their quirks. My grandpa's quiet way of full of love for his family and watching him dance with my grandma. I thought about my grandma's quick, cutting wit, 
the smell of roses and being beckoned over to her chair for a kiss when I came through the door, seeing my grandpa cry for the first time at her funeral and realizing there was more love in their relationship than I ever would realize. And I thought about how that carries me, how it protects me, how their memories both live on in me and in my cousins and my aunts and my uncles and in my parents. That love still holds me up when I am most desperate for it. It fills me when I hunger and thirst for righteousness. That love blesses me when the world is crashing down. Their love reminds me of God's love there. Mercy reminds me of God's mercy when I think there is none. I remember my identity as a child of God when I have forgotten through their memory. Somehow they are right there. It's backwards. It's strange and holy and mysterious and beautiful and dripping with God's goodness. And even though it feels impossible, we know deep down, way in our bones, that it is true. And even though it feels absolutely magical, it is simply a part of being human. It is ordinary in a way. This backwardsness, this otherworldliness, it's just like the Beatitudes. Our reading in Revelation says, Who are these robed in white? These are those who have come through the great ordeal. They are our saints, our loved ones who have come before us. Like us now still living, they have gone through the great ordeal, just as we are going through ours. They have been suffering. They had hungered and thirsted for righteousness and wondered where God was in all their pain. They had gone through impossible relationships, had resentment, maybe experienced a divorce and felt like the world was falling down on them, but they have also been mentored, loved, and cared for when they desperately needed a word of care. They have seen depression and completely been crushed by their eternal struggles, but they have also felt the jumping with life abundance that only God can give. They have cried out to God when they needed a sign, and they have also felt his presence so close that hallelujahs fell from their lips. They had seen death, and they had witnessed the empty tomb. And just like they help us along the way through our great ordeal, our great adventures, successes, struggles in life, they had people helping them too. They had their own saints, their own cloud of witnesses, being the blessing on the other end of their beatitudes, they were saints and they were human. All Saints Day is this day where we remember the saints, the love and people who have gone before us and have gone through that great ordeal. Yes, but All Saints Day can be something different too, I think. It can be a day where we remember our own sainthood. The ways that we can be a blessing to others now and the ways that God certifies and invites us into the humanity we share just because. Just because it's human nature. Just because God loves us for who we are. We are, after all, still saint even while living. Paul often says this. Luther even says we are saint while paradoxically sinners completely redeemed while completely in sin. Talk about otherworldly. The Beatitudes are said matter-of-factly, I think, because that is the way the world works, the way God's world works, the actual world when we strip the sin and the evilness from our world and our prescribed ideas of what it means to be strong when we remember God's actual love for us and we actually remember that we are human beings going through the full range of human experience and that we are not machines. That need to put limits on perfection that need to hold up some illusion of what it means to be good. This is the way the world actually is. It is holy and sacred and it is hard. Sometimes we catch a little beautiful glimpse of this. 
and we know deep down in our bones that this is the way it is. The Beatitudes, this upside down way to live, might actually be right side up. Dear church, dear saints, the Beatitude is a call into kingdom living, into a way that recognizes the way of God where those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are filled with what they have asked for, where those who are merciful are not crushed, but they receive the mercy that they deserve, where those who are persecuted will receive the blessings of God's kingdom. The Beatitudes reveal and invite us into our shared humanity and remind us that it's okay to experience all of those things. It is part of the sacredness of being human. And here in the Beatitudes, Jesus calls that human experience a blessing. It is holy and it is saintly, even as it is full of grief and hurt and hunger for something different. Happy All Saints Day. May we remember those who have gone through their great ordeal. May we hold them close as we go through ours. And may we show the kingdom's love and mercy we have received as others go through their own. Let it be a blessing. Amen.